After a night of unexpected snow in Spokane, Washington, we are here at the McCarthy Athletic Center with a matchup between the number 17 home Gonzaga Bulldogs and the Pepperdine Waves. Today, we've got myself, Thomas Gallagher, and Amanda Smith, and the Zags are looking good, and one of the reasons why is Caitlin Trong, who's been playing great and stepping up for the Zags. Yeah, I think it's so impressive and just important to have a player like Kaylin Trong on your team for moments like this, right? We haven't seen her sister, Kaylee Trong, since November. So to be able to put up these kind of numbers like she is in a position that she's not typically used to playing, right? At the point guard position, Thursday, 19 points. Just another easy day for Kaylin Trong. 7 of 14 from the floor, 6 assists, 4 rebounds. It's going to be really important for her to get going again. Show a little attitude like that. Here. Absolutely. And for the Waves, Ali Stedman has been out for the past six games, and Marley Walls, the guard who's had to step up and take her place. So interesting, because we were just talking about that on the other side, right, when we look at Gonzaga. But a similar situation for Pepperdine. Their star player goes out. Guess what? Someone needs to step up and put up those same numbers that she is. It's been Marley Walls for the Waves. Last two games, a combined 43 points. That's insane. 12 of 21 from the floor. Obviously, Gonzaga going to have to know where she is on the court today. The Zags are 20-2 and two on the season, undefeated in conference play, and they're looking for their 14th straight win. We'll see if that happens when we come right back for the game. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. Welcome back to the Martin Center for today's matchup between the Pepperdine Waves and the home Gonzaga Bulldogs. Looking into these starting lineups for the Pepperdine Waves, they've had some changes made for today's game. We talked about Marley Walls in the beginning, but they also have Jane Guava starting, uh, Teresa Grace and Banifo, Drea Brumfield getting her first start, and Becky Obima. So a bit of a difference in the starting lineups. Helena Friend is not starting for the Waves. And on the other side, for the Zags, the starters are Esther Little, Kaylin Trong, Brenna Maxwell, Michaela Williams, and Yvonne Ejim. So we'll go into the keys of the game for this matchup and what Gonzaga has to do to come away with their 14th straight win. Yeah, so when we look at Pepperdine, right, it's not a team necessarily, when you look at their conference record, two and eight, 
that just jumps out to you. But with some changes to their lineup, a couple keys to the game for the Zags, defense to offense, right? This is a Pepperdine team that is holding their opponents to 66% shooting from the floor. I think for Gonzaga, it's going to start on that defensive end, pressuring Pepperdine offensively, and then bam, get out and run. That leads me to my next point here. Hit the three. Gonzaga shooting a record-breaking 41%, number one in the nation right now, from the perimeter. That's going to be an area of the game to watch as we look forward, especially without Eliza Hollingsworth, who has been confirmed out for this game. And then knowing Pepperdine's defense, right? They're really going to pressure that perimeter shooting. And then just play like Zags. At this point in the season, we know who this team is. We know what they can do. They adjust on the fly. We've seen the resilience. Get out. Have a hot start. Don't let them catch up. And going off that point of Eliza Hollingworth, you see it here on Thursday. She took a hard fall on this rough foul, hitting her head on the way down, and she's not able to play today. And that is why Esther Little is in the starting lineup. So, Amanda, what kind of void do, do the Zags have to fill with her being out? Yeah, I think, you know, to just kind of build on what I was just saying, you lose offense, you lose height, you lose kind of a player that can play in multiple different positions, but this is something we've seen in different capacities all throughout the season for Gonzaga, right? So we've talked so much this season about being versatile, being able to go to your bench, who can step up when someone needs to come out. I think that they have prepared for these moments, right? That's why they're collegiate basketball players, so I expect nothing less then to see Esther Little step up and fill that void. At one point in that game on Thursday, they were down to seven players as they were before earlier in the season. And Peyton Muma, Callie Stokes had to step in and uh, bring big minutes as well as Destiny Burton. But today they're looking like a strong team of eight. And they're hoping to put on a strong performance for the fans here in the kennel. It's loud, the fans are clapping. And we're about to start here with the tip. And we're off. Brennan Maxwell finds the tip. Kaylin on the left wing. Ejim comes up out to Michaela. She's got a shot there, but she's running the offense. Kaylin calls for the high screen. Looking for Yvonne on the roll, but she takes it herself, falls short. And Marley Walls comes up with the ball. Trying to get Brumfield in position. Tick, kicked out to Waba. Down to Adebuma, and she puts it in. Yeah, great position play from Obima. But I think, you know, when you look at Esther Little in that moment, right? Awesome help side defense. We're going to have to see that rotation throughout this game. Some strength in the paint. Michaela Williams off back rim. As Waba gets the rebound, finds Walls on the outside. The wings getting on the outside. Waba coming down the middle hard. And that's over the top and a foul from Esther Little looking for the charge. So two times now, right down the court, Pepperdine looking to attack the paint, looking to attack those post players. Fantastic play from Waba to draw the foul. Esther Little once again in position. I thought that was great defensive rotation, something that I think communicate throughout the game on where you need to be. Uh, and that's one that, you know, maybe she was a step too late, which resulted in the foul. Waba hits the first free throw. She has to play pivotal minutes here for the Waves with a couple of their starters out for today's matchup. That yeah. one is short but falls in. Yeah, and she's been a player for this Pepperdine team that's you know, really stepped up this year for them. In her junior season, she's averaging the most points she has. If you look at her numbers, averaging 10 this year. Seasons passed last year as a sophomore five, and then the year prior as a freshman four. So a player who's really starting to find her way, find her strengths. Obima picks up the foul there, playing aggressive against our point guard, Kaylin Trong, who we talked about earlier, who's been playing great. She's been the, averaging the most points in conference play for the Zags. Nice pump fake and fine to Yvonne Ejim who puts it in. It's just incredible to have that kind of versatility on your team, right? A player who can score, but also right now is leading the conference in assists per game. 
just to have that kind of vision to know, yes, this is my time to step up and look for the play, and then when it, when can I find my teammate? And Banifo there getting a bit ahead of herself. See it here again, she looks for the shot, but finds Ejim cutting and she puts it in for two. And knowing that she can make those shots, right, it forces the defense to have to make a decision and a choice. Well, Kaylin kind of faded on that three. As Walls brings it up, looking for Waba, who's got the mismatch. Esther Little there helping as Abanifo takes it at the top. Walls re reject rejects the screen going in and spins and a travel is called on Walls. Michaela Williams getting the call to guard Marley Walls for the waves. Michaela usually gets those Defensive uh, calls against the best players. Ejim finds an open shot from a little deep and can't knock it down. Molly Walls looking for a deep pass, finds Brumfield. And take a look at this, right? You can see Kaylin Trong hanging off the perimeter defense. Three point shooting, not Pepperdine's, Pepperdine's strong point, mm -hmm. right? So knowing that she has room to kind of sink in a little bit and be in position for helps ID on the drive. Brenna cutting to the hoop and draws the foul. Well, speaking of three-point shooting, right? That's a absolutely. player that we absolutely know can knock down those shots. But I love to see her attacking the basket, kind of using her versatility, using you know her handles and, and a quick first step to get herself to the free throw line. It's pretty wild to think that she shoots higher percentage from the three-point line than her overall field goal percentage. But she's really, as the season has gone on, teams are starting to key in on her on the outside, so she has to kind of take those opportunities to drive to the hoop, and she did there and made herself some free throws. Yeah, absolutely. Supergirl post from Gonzaga Women's Basketball on Instagram with her dad, Steven, rebounding for her with that three-point shooting. So we know her parents, Steven and Kim, are in the stands somewhere here. Shout out to them if they're listening, but They've got a front row seat somewhere, so <laughs> not Absolutely. sure they're joining into the television and broadcast. And Britta took that rebound, found Kay Lynn running the offense here. Yvonne taking it one-on-one, -on -one. gets stripped there from Obima. Ejim giving Kay Lynn a screen. A lot of pick and roll action early between Kay Lynn and Yvonne, but no success there as we got some subs First subs of the game, Destiny Burton and Callie Stokes coming in for Michaela Williams and Esther Little. Yeah, two players that we've seen kind of step up in minutes, right? Especially when we look at a player like Callie Stokes, someone who is considerably playing extended minutes in this point in the season. Uh, and she's a player that Coach Fortier, you know, has said prior to this season even starting, she just loves to coach a player like her that is so willing to get out and do things like this, put on that defensive pressure. As Amosa comes down the middle and floats it in. The Zags having to work it around. They're not getting easy shots on their first Attempts through their plays. And Brenna having to pull up for a tough shot. Pepperdine's been doing a good job of fronting this Zags offense. Waba gets fouled from Kaylin. That's kind of, you know, when I talked about keys to the game, right? Defense to offense. It's almost like Pepperdine heard me. And I was like, all right, we can do that. Great court vision from Walls to find Waba up the floor. But on the offensive end for Gonzaga right now, something that we talked about prior to this game, is the fact that Pepperdine's defense is not going to just let you take shots, right? So the Zags, they like that three-point three point ball. Well, Pepperdine, they're not gonna let you just shoot that. So I think right now, instead of so much dribbling, we need to see a little more passing movement to force them to make a defensive decision, force them to move. That way, you can hit the cutter maybe on a rotation. 
Yeah, it seems as though in the offensive side, they've only been getting involved two players at a time per play instead of invoking the entire team, all five players making a difference in the kind of play that they're running. We'll see if they change it up here on this possession. Ejim from the top to Maxwell. Callie at the top. Kaylin finds Ejim down. She goes aggressive for the reverse. And it's just short, but Callie Stokes hustling for the extra rebound. Ejim getting a nice feed from Kaylin and puts it down. That's all thanks to that rebound from Callie Stokes. Yeah, great ball movement on that rotation, right? And then Callie Stokes, a player that this is what you can count on her to do when she comes into the game. That play and that second chance opportunity really started with that offensive board. And then I love the confidence from Kaylin Trong with like three Pepperdine players in the paint to just know she's gonna hit her teammate. Amosa with a fake and Callie comes in hot with the foul. And th with that, we're going to head into a break. The Zags are down one, seven to six Pepperdine, and we will head into a break. You're watching the WCC Network on Stadium. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. The Zags not off to a great start. They're down one. Amanda, what have we seen from the Zags team that kind of is a bit similar to their performance against LMU early on on this past Thursday? Sure. Well, I think, you know, heading into this game, we talked about the importance of just getting out to a hot start, getting out, running, pushing the basketball. Credit to Pepperdine, though, because defensively, we know that this is how they like to play. They like to play tight and in your face, and they've done a really good job of taking Gonzaga offensively out of rhythm here to start. A lot of the offense has been run through Ejim early on. They haven't per se doubled her, but they do collapse pretty quickly when she gets the ball down low. Amosa finding the rebound. Walls looking for an open. Waba, she takes the shot, and that is short. But a rebound from Mbanifo. Walls getting a chance to reset. Extra possession for the Waves. Esther staying in front of Walls. She goes for the lay. And another extra rebound. The Zags unable to crash quickly. And another one from Mbanifo. Callie Stokes able to find it. And the Zags break free from the extra opportunities of the Waves. Yeah, kind of a lucky break for Gonzaga. Four opportunities for Pepperdine to score there. I think all of them know defensively that cannot happen as we continue throughout this game. And Peyton Muma has stepped into the game as Yvonne Ejim has taken a seat as well as Kaylin Trong. Muma with the floater. Can't find it off the glass. And Yvonne looking, is coming back to check in. 
They're lacking a bit of maybe that rebounding presence. Walls finds Mbanifo who swings to Waba and she sinks it. Esther kind of fell to the ground and Michaela Williams had to go collapse and help and give that open shot to Waba. Yeah, and if we talk about the three-point shooting rate, right, I mentioned that this is not a team that you look out look at and say like, oh yeah, they they rock behind the perimeter. You know, they without kind of their star player, Ali Stedman. They've only made now 57 three-pointers all season long. For reference, Brenna Maxwell, she's made 60, right? So you're looking at a single player versus an entire program. And the travel there from Michaela Williams, who couldn't make the shot earlier in their possession. And Kaylin and Yvonne quickly get back into the game as Muma and Burton head on back to the bench. But as you were saying, the Zags are by far a better team around the perimeter with shooting with the great, the best shooter in college basketball, Brenna Maxwell. And then in conference play, Kaylin has been the better percentage shooter from the three. And then unfortunately not playing Eliza, who's also a great three-point shooter, adds to that team. And wide open, Stedman's come in. We talked about her, how she hasn't been playing, but she comes in off the bench and makes a layup. Yeah, her last game, and this is huge for Pepperdine. Her last game a few weeks ago on January 5th, she played about six minutes at Pacific and then went out with a reason that has been undisclosed. So they have been without kind of their go-to leading scorer, averaging 15 points a game. And that pass sails. Ball goes back to the Zags. But with Stedman coming back to play, she is or she was at the time when she was playing, their leading scorer. So that frees up Walls as well offensively. Michaela Williams getting the screen from Esther Little going hard to the hoop, but just short. And the Waves are putting on a clinic defensively in this first quarter. Yeah, and this is kind of huge, right? Because if you think about recruiting or uh, you know, looking at this game as a whole, you would say, okay, she hasn't played in a few weeks. Is this someone that we're going to focus on as we scout for this game? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, this could kind of be, especially given the fact that she didn't start, kind of an adjustment that we're going to have to see Gonzaga make with having her in Pepperdine's lineup. Kelly taking on Walba for the pull-up and falls short, and Ejim gets in a jump ball with Stedman. The ball goes to the waves as... Brenna Maxwell comes on in for Callie Stokes, and we're right back to the starting lineup for the Zags. And Brea Drumfield comes in for Marley Walls. Stedman now running the offense for the first time in a while. She gets the screen, looks for the pull up from the free throw line, can't get the friendly roll. Kaylin, eyes up, peeled for Esther down low. She does the spin move, finds Esther Little, kicks it out to Yvonne, and she gets, ooh, that looks like that was rolling from this angle, but that falls out. Stedman takes the three, and she sinks it. Ooh, and she kind of held it a little bit. This is not looking good for the Zags right now. That hot start we were hoping for in the keys of the game is just not happening, but it is happening for the Pepperdine Waves. You see the shot there from Stedman. Yeah, so she's a player that obviously right comes right into the game and makes an immediate impact. An 8-0. Pepperdine run over the last two and a half minutes. Gonzaga, they haven't scored in about four and a half. So offensively, you got to come out and make an adjustment. I'd like to see kind of them trying to hit the high post a little bit more, right? Kind of how we did on that last play, hit the high post, go into the paint. If defense claps, kick it back out. You got to get shot attempts up. Right now, Pepperdine, they're just kind of finding an offensive rhythm. And I think to have a player like Ali Stedman back in your lineup, it's just giving them a little bit of confidence. The Zags looking to capitalize on this possession. It's been a few minutes since they've made a field goal. Yvonne posting up. 
And there's a foul from Brumfield on Michaela Williams trying to get positioning. But yeah, with that offense, with the Zags, it seems as though if they go inside, they, they don't kick it out. They just, early on, it's just been if they're inside, they're staying inside. And if they're outside, they're staying outside. They're not giving themselves to the full court inside it out and collapsing that defense of the waves as e Egypt puts it down. She's looking for a foul there, but converts from the right side. Wall's going quickly to Banifo, not much time. And Banifo off the glass, and that's not gonna go in. The Zags get a stop to close out the first quarter. And the Pepperdine waves are up 15 to eight. And with that, we will head on into a first quarter break. You're watching Gonzaga women's basketball on the WCC network on stadium. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center after the first quarter. The Zags are down seven. The Pepperdine Waves have put on a defensive clinic and they get another stop there on Kaylin Trong. Marley Walls over to Amosa. The Zags collapse and it leaves open on the outside. The Waves reset. Waba comes around. And, and Banifo slips trying to get positioning on Esther Little and she draws her second foul. As Callie Stokes quickly comes on in for Esther Little. Yeah, and you can absolutely see Pepperdine looking to attack the paint, right? That's where they've been incredibly successful so far in this game, kind of. The Gonzaga rotation is there. It's maybe just a second too short so that they found, you know, what's working right now, why stop? Walls going down the paint, and she finds Obima, who hits the short jumper. That lead extends to nine. Akelia Williams getting the screen from Callie. Ejim screens for Trong, and she gets the open shot, but falls short. Ejim with the second chance, out to Kaylin. Another missed shot, nothing's falling here for the Zags. They're shooting 16.7% from the field so far in this match. And you can see they're a little bit out of rhythm offensively. Great defense there from Marley Walls heading back the other way. Kaylin trying to poke it out from behind. 
the frustration you can see from her attempt to kind of steal that. It's just nothing is really going well for the Zags offensively right now. You see the steal here again from Marley Walls. And Kaylin trying to look for an opportunity to poke it free. Swipes too much and draws the foul. Kaylin Trong takes a seat as Destiny Burton comes on in. Wobble in the corner, back out to Walls. The Waves have kind of been effortlessly running some of these plays through Walls. It's Waba. Gets a bit thrown off with the strip from the Zags and throws it right out of bounds. Somewhat of a brain fart there from Waba. Well, if a player would have been there, it would have been perfect, right? Because there was no Gonzaga players kind of on that right side of the floor defensively. I think that Pepperdine right now has kind of just thrown them off. Once again, a little bit of a slow start. We did see something similar on Thursday. So I think it's just going to come down to kind of like collecting as a group, right? Saying how have we been taking out of our game plan, right? They are basically not allowing them to do anything they want, which is to have that strength in three-point shooting, to shoot from the perimeter. Oh, a four so far in this game for Gonzaga, and it's something we knew to look at without Eliza Hollingsworth in this game, right? That She's a 45% three-point shooter. So mm -hmm. someone else, right? We look at Brennan Maxwell, we look at Kaitlyn Trong. Those kinds of players offensively have been super, super quiet so far in this game. Avon Ejim, leading the team right now with six points. Then you've got Brennan Maxwell with two. That's it. Other offensive-minded people have to get involved. And the Zags almost able to get away with a steal there. And then Waba fights for it after the fact. And that goes off, looks like Michaela Williams. So stays here with the Waves. I think the Zags just need some sort of fast break to just have something go in. Just a layup would be nice to give them a bit of confidence on their shots. That is deep as the shot clock drops. But the ball goes right back to the waves. They're just getting all these opportunities. They're not shooting too well from the field, but the second chance opportunities have been plentiful for the waves. Yeah, you know what? That's what's interesting, right? If we look at shot attempts, both teams with 19, and the differential isn't huge. Pepperdine, they've made six field goals. Gonzaga, three. I think what's happening is they are getting those second chance looks. They're building up their confidence. Like, if I'm Pepperdine right now, I'm feeling great. We're in a great position. We're, we came in. We're going with our game plan. Gonzaga, they just kind of need to find that confidence and rhythm on their end as well. And I think it's going to start right here with their senior leader, Kaylin Trong. Going for something different, Yvonne. And there's a charge drawn from Obima. The waves just clicking on all cylinders defensively. And the Zags are trying to run something through Egypt, which they've been doing all game. And the waves are handling it beautifully. Yeah, I mean, credit to Obima, right? Knowing that that's a play that they've run multiple times throughout this game, wanting to hit Ejim in the paint. Bam, being there in position, being ready, and then taking the charge. And the Waves take a timeout. And with that, we will head into a break. You're watching Gonzaga women's basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium.
Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. 6.49 left in this second quarter, and the Zags are still down nine. They're really having a hard time putting anything in the hoop, and the Waves are just stifling their ability to find any, even an open look. Yeah, it's almost like their offensive rhythm and flow is just completely off. And once again, credit to Pepperdine's defense for taking them out of rhythm and rotation. But I think it's going to come in these moments and these waves, no pun intended, <laughs> of, you know, Pepperdine before the timeout. They had no points in the last two and a half minutes, two turnovers within that span of time, and Gonzaga just not able to capitalize, right, and use that to their advantage. So I think it starts defensively, not allowing those second chance opportunities, grabbing those boards, and then get out, push the basketball, and run in transition, force them to run with you, try to score quickly, because right now when they're setting up offensively, Pepperdine, they're just hanging right there with them. Zags were kind of looking for something different there. Off, off the break, they went with a, somewhat of a press, and then they pulled back after Muma got a foul, but they get the defensive stop there with the steal from Kalen as Brennan Maxwell comes in for Peyton Muma. Yeah, the energy you can build off and have you have more control over how you do defensively. Sometimes shots just aren't gonna fall, but you can have control with the kind of energy you put into your defensive effort, and they put it in there, and then Kaylin Trong comes down and makes the elbow shot. So that steal turned over into some points. So let's see if this is a big turning point for the Zags, and if they can close out this second half strong, or this first half strong. Foul on the ground. Obima able to draw the foul. As Amosa comes back in for Hoff. Let's see here, Kaelin Strong shot on the elbow. The waves have been sagging off, giving the Zags those open mid-range and threes. And uh, Kaelin, who's been running the offense most of the time, hasn't been able to find her kind of open shot, but she gets one there. Obima knocks down the first free throw. And the waves back up to nine. Walls jumps the screen, but draws a blocking foul. And you can kind of see the reaction from Walls, right? She wanted the dip of the shoulder. She wanted that offensive call, but I kind of like, you know, this gritty play right now from Kaylin Trong. It's just like, it's, it's passion, right? And that's, I feel like, what Gonzaga needs right now. They need to kind of just get some energy. I would say it's been like a pretty mellow game from them. And with that, she's gonna get a chance to go to the free throw line. And sometimes just getting the opportunity to take some free throws changes your approach offensively. Yeah, Especially absolutely. your mindset, just seeing something go through the hoop. But she was very aggressive on that attempt. Yeah, with Eliza Hollingsworth out, their forwards don't have, per se, the, the range that they do when she's on the court. And the Waves have been pressuring Kaylin and, and Brenna, so they're taking away the shots from the shooters and then just baiting everyone else to take shots. Waba going aggressive, but that gets tipped. But it stays with the Zags. From our angle, it kind of looked like that was off a of zag, but the call stays, and Ejim throws it into Kaylin, and they get to run another possession. They've been doing a lot of this high screens with Ejim and Kaylin. She gets the open three. That's long, and that's a good-looking shot. Right, like I hope she continues to build her confidence in three-point shooting because that makes her such a threat. Defensively, then in the paint, then like having to make a choice of, oh my gosh, can I just stay here and hang out in the paint and guard her here? Or do I have to step out? And Obima draws the foul, head to the line. 
Just so many opportunities for the waves on the paint. The Zags completely collapse, but a bit too much swiping there. Sure. And it's starting with the entry pass, right? So when we see her at the line, we have to ask, how did she get here? Well, it starts with the entry pass, and it's something that Pepperdine, I think, it's been way too easy for them to hit that post player throughout these first two quarters. I think it's going to be a point of emphasis, you know, maybe even fronting, and then just trusting that help side is going to be there. McCarthy Athletic Center bringing the energy, but not enough to shake these free throws for the Waves. Esther Little at the elbow. Kaylin finds Brenna. She finally gets somewhat of an open look. But even then, it's not too open as Esther Little draws the foul, going for the rebound. Yeah, just in great position on Mbanifo. Just kind of that awareness to continue to push her back, push her back, and then obviously the official right there to make the call. Open look for Callie from the baseline, but that's short, it's extra chance. Another short shot, but Callie draws the foul. The Zags have only been to the free throw line twice. And that was uh, Kay Lynn and Brenna, so. I think more of that aggressiveness offensively, just getting anyone up to the line yeah, just to build up that confidence with the shot. Totally, and you know, if we really think about the numbers of this game, four of 23 shooting for Gonzaga, that's 17%, yet it's now just an eight point game. So those kind of numbers, I would expect like, oh my gosh, this is a 25 point game heading into the half, but defensively, their rotation is off, but luckily for them, Pepperdine, they're not really capitalizing on those second chance opportunities that they've had on the third, fourth, sometimes, you know, even fifth second chance opportunity scoring on the offensive end. And a rough entry pass from Brody gives the Zags the ball back. Kaylin with the high screen from Cali. Michaela now getting her screen. Foul there on Waba. And with that, now it's a great opportunity to just be even more aggressive, just draw any foul from the, from the waves and they're at the line. Yeah, so this is where they're finding success right now, right? And then on Pepperdine's end, they haven't scored in five minutes. So this is an opportunity once again for Gonzaga to kind of like chip into this lead and make some like room heading into the half, like get yourself in a position where you're feeling good. Even though you're down right now, and this isn't going to be a game where I feel like Pepperdine's just going to go away, but you want to put yourself in a position heading into the half where you've got some offensive confidence and are starting to kind of work together in a rotation. Second chance opportunity at Cali Stokes from the top. Can't knock it down as Brody gets the rebound. Michaela Williams up front on walls, adding a bit more pressure from the beginning. She's still a bit though sagging off. She could even add a bit more pressure to make that look inside that much harder. And beautiful swipe from ben Brenna Maxwell from behind. She's looking to go coast to coast and the pass gets kicked around. And back to the waves. Some frustration there from Michaela Williams and Brenna Maxwell trying to get something in transition. So we just saw Allie Stedman on the bench kind of come back. She was not on the bench for quite a few minutes, saw her come back with what looks to be the athletic trainer, and now it seems as if she's gonna check back into the game, and this is once again huge for Pepperdine. And it's, they're, they're probably being very careful with their minutes and somewhat inching her way back into playing. Absolutely. On the wall is doubled. Can't make the pass to Obima, and the Zags are running. Out to the wide open, Brenna Maxwell, and she knocks it down. 
And the McCarthy Athletic Center has a bit more life. The Zags just down four. And Michaela Williams bringing aggressive defense after that successful offensive possession, trying to rattle Marley Walls. She makes the entry pass to Obima. And Esther Little playing great defense. And that brings even more life into this Gonzaga team. You can feel an energy shift in here. You can hear it from the crowd. Gonzaga, they're out and running. They're feeling hot. This is what we love to see. The assist from Kaylin Trong and then Brenna Maxwell doing what we know she can. And then the confidence from Esther Little, right? Like we know that defensively you can do this. Just being productive. A 6-0 Gonzaga run continuing to chip into this Pepperdine lead. Kelly Williams out to Ejim. Back out to Williams. Six seconds on the shot clock and that draws a foul. Michaela still a bit frustrated from her attempt, but she will get a shot at the free throw line. And going back to that last offensive possession with Brennan Maxwell knocking down the three, she's made a three in every single game this season. And then last game, with only uh, 90 seconds left and she knocked one down to continue her streak. I don't even want to say just like an incredible three point shooter. I just want to leave it as an incredible shooter, period. I have often said that she has one of the quickest releases I've ever seen in the game of college basketball. And I think that that's what makes her such a threat offensively because on defense, if you give her any sort of room or space, or even if you've got a hand in her face, she can still produce. McCarthy got Lennon Center bringing energy for defense and Banifel can't knock it down off the backboard. And it stays here with the waves. But this home court advantage is unlike any other in the WCC. And the Zags are capitalizing on, capitalizing on it. But in Banifo, the Zags really want to cut this down to a tire as Yvonne Ejim gets the entry pass from Kaylin Trong and knocks it down, cutting the lead to just two. The Zags coaching staff on their feet, trying to bring the energy, but in Banifo, again, from the left side, gives the Waves a four-point lead. Trong getting a couple screens coming to the top. And running that pick and roll with Ejim. She finds a bit of a fader there. Not an easy shot, but Callie Stokes hustling to keep it alive. The jump ball goes to the ways. Great hustle from Callie Stokes. 56 seconds left on the clock. Yeah, and if we take a look at the replay, right? It looks like they wanted a foul call on the offensive board from Kelly Stokes, and I don't disagree. She was getting arms wrapped around her. A moving screen from the waves. So the Zags have an opportunity to maybe get two more possessions if they run a quick play here. Brenna off the screen as Kaylin Trong draws the foul from Waba. The Zags are trying to move quickly with only 40.6 seconds left. Esther Little comes in for Yvonne Ejim. Give her a breather for the rest of this first half. I would say in the last maybe like two and a half minutes, we've just seen like a different offensive Gonzaga basketball team. And I think it just starts with energy. They came out a little flat. It almost seemed like they were just kind of, you know, playing. And that's great. But they, come, they came out like the last two and a half minutes, like hot, hard, like just knowing what they need to do to kind of get back in this game and ultimately take the lead. And it's come from most of these defensive stops, the defensive energy that you can control. But Alice Stedman knocks it down, coming in for her second time in this second quarter. 
The lead now to five for the Waves. Last possession for the Zags. Stokes with the screen. She gets double, Cali down low. A tough look and Stedman fouls her. Stokes will head on to the line to try to cut this lead down to three. So these are gonna be free throw attempts, number 13 and 14 for Gonzaga, right? So when we talk about struggling shooting, 22% from the floor so far in this first half, 14% from three, but 83% from the free throw line. As of course, <laughs> you know it's real. I always say it's real. It's the broadcaster's jinx, <laughs> and I apologize. Yeah. But the Zags have been taking advantage of the fouls from the Waves and getting these Zags. Moving screen from Obima. And just like that, we thought the Zags wouldn't get another opportunity. But it turns around. See it here. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't really see any movement from her feet or shoulders on the call, but regardless of, of what I think, it's going to be Gonzaga basketball. Kaylin Strong looking for a last shot from half court, floats it up, and just off the rim. And this lead is to four for the Pepperdine Waves. The Zags, although not playing too well offensively, should feel somewhat good about being able to close that gap from at, at most nine to just four. And the Waves heading into the break should be feeling pretty good about their performance defensively. They're going to hope to bring a bit more of their offense out into the second half, but we will head on to a break. And we'll be right back to talk halftime on the WCC Network on Stadium. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center. It's halftime, the Pepperdine Waves are up 28 to 24. 
and the Zags are needing to bring new life, a reset here for the second half. Yeah, just some energy, how we talked about, right? And we saw these glimpses of it heading into halftime, but gonna be super important to continue that momentum as we head into the third quarter. Absolutely, and the Waves, they put on a clinic defensively, really giving the Zags a hard time getting any open shots. Yeah, I think they definitely took them out of any sort of offensive rhythm that they wanted to get in, which is great. That's what you should do. That's why you scout a basketball team. So Gonzaga just coming out, making those adjustments. I think, you know, not having Eliza Hollingsworth in this game, especially when it comes to three-point shooting, obviously made an incredible difference from the perimeter for GU, shooting just 13% from beyond the arc. So just finding what's working as we move into the second half. Even without Eliza uh, for rebounding, that was another big key. A lot of second chance opportunities for the Waves. But the Zags kind of got aggressive offensively and gave themselves those free throws towards the end to really close that gap. And it could, it could have been double digits if they didn't play as aggressive offensively towards the end there. Yeah, and I love that you brought up rebounding, right? Because I'm looking over the numbers from this first half. Pepperdine out rebounding Gonzaga 25 to 12 right now. Pepperdine, they've got eight offensive boards, but just two second chance points. So not capitalizing on those opportunities. And that's lucky for GU, because that could have been an easy 16 point deficit. And we'll see what their approach will be like coming out into this second half. But let's look into these WCC standings. The Zags are obviously undefeated in WCC play, 17 in the country. And it's been kind of them and Portland battling it out for the top while Pepperdine is sitting there two and eight in conference play, but they are not playing like a two and eight team today. No, and that's kind of what we talked about heading into this game, right? I don't necessarily think that their record reflects their competitiveness and what they can do on any given day. So Gonzaga, obviously they want to stay undefeated and at the top here in conference play. Gonna have to come out in the second half with some new life. Well, the Zags will hope to turn it around in this second half and we will come back to watch that second half you're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. Welcome back to the McCarthy Athletic Center, 28-24 Pepperdine Waves. And 
just looking back at that first half, highlights some real bright play offensively for the Waves. Here we see uh, Becky Obima getting a lot of work down low, just taking advantage of us not having Eliza Hollingsworth on the court. As, and then you see Ali Stedman coming off the bench, coming back after missing six straight games. Yeah, so just having her back in the rotation, back in the lineup, she's only played five minutes, but she has eight points within that span of time. So that just tells you what she can do when she's in there. And on the other side, the Zags have been doing most of their offense, work through Yvonne Ejim, and uh, she's been getting a lot of looks down low and just being aggressive as she always is. But it hasn't been easy. They, they collapsed very quickly. But I don't imagine they're not going to stop going to Yvonne Ejim in that second half. Yeah, this is a play that we see so often from this Gonzaga basketball team. The pass inside from Trong to Ejim. And just using that physicality, using her strength. She wanted the foul call on that one. Hey, we did too. <laughs> the Zags hoping to come out of this half ready to roll and playing hard and aggressive and closing this gap early. And we'll be right back for the second half on the WCC Network on Stadium. Welcome back to the Martin Center for this second half. We'll start off looking at some uh, first half stats between these two teams. And 28 to 24, you can see the differences in field goal percentage, three points, turnovers, and rebounds. A lot of turnovers from the Waves. That's the only thing that is looking in favor for the Zags. Yeah, the number that just jumps out to me if we're looking at this as a whole, it, I just have to go to the rebounds. Pepperdine out rebounding Gonzaga 25 to 12. I mentioned them having eight offensive boards in Gonzaga, right? You have to think about it. They've been getting these second chance looks. They just haven't been converting, right? So with eight second, eight offensive boards, that could be like 16 points. And this is a four point game. So I think here in the second half, boxing out kind of that like fundamental basketball of doing those things, being in the right position, 
and then I think that's just going to create some offensive flow for them on the other end. And I think also the Zags, even when the Waves would get a second opportunity off a rebound, it wouldn't be like a putback. It would be they would still key in defensively, even if the Waves got the ball back. So it just they just couldn't get the ball in their hands off some of those rebounds. Um, but just going back to revisit the keys of the game we had earlier, what do you see as something maybe they have to adjust, or do they stay with those keys that they had earlier, but just convert them into this second half? Yeah, you know what? I want to stick with the keys that I had because I know that they're very capable of doing that, right? Defense to offense, not allowing those second chance looks, right? Starting there, fundamental basketball. Then the three-point shooting, yes, it's going to have to be a little bit of an adjustment when you look at the three-point shooters that you have in this game, but that is a place that they have to score from if they want to kind of, I think, continue to chip into and build a confident lead against Pepperdine and then play like a zag. I think coming out initially, we didn't see a lot of energy from them. That completely shifted in the latter of the second quarter. Uh, and I think you could feel kind of that energy and momentum from the crowd as well. So just building off of that, getting out there, getting it done. And last time, or this game itself is the lowest they've scored in a half all season. And the last time they've scored that low is 25 against San Francisco, January 5th. Um, and they came out that second half and scored 38. They had a bit of a uh, bringing back some life and mm. offensively. So the Zags really hoping to bring the energy they had defensively and then having that carry over offensively. Yeah, super interesting, right, to think about this being the lowest point total all season long and a half, knowing what this team can do on the offensive end on any given day. So I do want to give credit once again to Pepperdine's defense for coming out and kind of pressuring the basketball, taking them out of rhythm. But if I look at the Waves offensively, you know, kind of having those players like Allie Stedman, who they didn't anticipate playing in this game. She's been so, so productive in the five minutes that she's played. Having eight points, like that, that is an incredible statistic. So just kind of an awareness uh, defensively on your rotation of where the shooters are, where are those offensive minded players on the court and how do we contain them, right? It's not about stopping, it's about containing. For this Waves team, going into their half, they obviously know playing here in the McCarthy Athletic Center against the Zags, and they're up. They're going to get a different kind of energy from this Gonzaga team, and they have to really step up and match it, if not surpass it in a lot of ways to make that first half performance continue over. And here we go into this third quarter. Zags down four, and they start... Kaylin Trong running the offense. Esther Little finds on the elbow. Gets it down to Ejim and she muscles her way for the layup. That's that physicality we were talking about at halftime that she is so incredibly successful with down low in the paint. Once she gets the ball in there on the entry pass, let her go to work. Waba looking for Amosa. Kicked out to Walls. High screen coming from Amosa. Ejim taking the switch, staying in front. And Mbafo cannot make it down. As the Zags on the run. Not able to get a shot in transition, having to reset and run the offense. Going back to that same play in that first possession. This time swung out to Michaela Williams. Stepped back from free throw line, just short. Waba comes up with the rebound. I love those quick little passes though, right away to kind of force Pepperdine's defense to make a choice and get them out of defensive position, which allows players like Michaela Williams then to attack that free throw kind of paint area on the court. Walls going down the middle with a floater and gets the roll. That's a pretty play. Lead up to four. Esther Little on the run, and Kaylin Trong finds her. Cut that lead down to two once more. This is what we were missing in the first half, right? That kind of like get out and go urgency energy that we know Gonzaga has. Yeah, they find Kaylin right away after a defensive stop. But those forwards really got to get on the run if 
they want to get those kind of fast break opportunities. And Esther Little beautifully cuts down the court and gets an open right hand layup. The Waves on the baseline. Running a bit of a stack as Mbanifo can't get the open layup and Waba's there. Extra opportunities, but Zach's still fighting and find it. As we were saying at the half, even on those extra rebounds, the Zags still pressure aggressively mm -hmm. and don't give an open layup for a second chance. Williams to Bree, quick release, and knocks it down. So impressive. It almost seems like right there, she didn't even get a clean catch on it, but she still goes up with it. and. Has such a quick release. Yeah, and it's almost as if, right, if you think back to watching that play develop, it's like she was in position to shoot as she was catching the basketball. So you could see her feet starting to move toward the hoop as she's approaching the catch. We're going to get another look at it right here. Money. As she starts her shot before she even has exactly. the ball in her hands. Mm -hmm. And you say the most, that's... That's probably not a good idea because you'll probably not catch the ball and make the mistake of getting too ahead of yourself, but she just got it down to such a beautiful routine. She's got it in her hands now, and she's quick off the dribble. Wow, knocks it down. Oh, come on, Brenna Buckets. Back to back, a quick six points in Gonzaga. They're feeling hot, kind of, what did we talk about? Building a lead, an 8-0 run over the last, get this, minute. And Michaela Williams pressuring hard, doubled up on walls. Brumfield, but Brenna Maxwell draws the foul, doing everything for the Zags right now. She doesn't have a nickname, but if I had to give her one, it'd be quick draw. <laughs> I'm gonna stick with Brenna Buckets here, okay? <laughs> Look at the offense, right? Something we know she can do. Yes, feeling it, energy, but I love this effort on the defensive end because yeah, she got the call, but she was like in position to head out there to deny the shot from Pepperdine. Amazing, amazing basketball. And you can tell the value of a defensive play like that is worth more to a player like Brenna Maxwell. She wants to do stuff for her team that she doesn't always do. And there she gets aggressive and a jump ball goes to the waves. But such a shift early in this third quarter. The Zags coming in down four, now up four. Michaela Williams, she just eyeing the ball. She's got beautiful defensive stance, just keeping walls in front of her as Waba now has it. Brumfield gets an open three, but no one there for the rebound. And Obima misses the open lay, a break for the Zags. Yeah, left completely open, right? It's when we talk about when that ball goes up, find a body, find a player, and then push them back. Obima, way, way too easy of an O-board. Brenna on Brumfield. She gets it down to Mbanifo and over to Waba, who takes the three. Michaela Williams trying to tempt her and miscommunication from the Waves on the rebound gives it right back to the Zags. And Ejim coming down the court, gets some Steam in front of her, but Walls gets an easy steal. Hustle there for the Zags coming back for Banifo. Knocks it down with some contact. Hoping to cut the lead down to one with a made free throw. And that's big for them because they, you know, heading into that play were one of their last nine field goal attempts. So the no look pass from Walls and then just Banifo taking the contact, going up strong. It's kind of shocking to me if we're looking at the score that this is just a two point game. It feels like Pepperdine should be up more and it should be Gonzaga kind of working their way back just based on how the first half went. Banifo knocks it down, lead to just one for the Zags. And Burton and Callie Stokes have come into the game Esther Little on the corner. Out back to Kaylin Strong. High screen from Burton. Kaylin rejects. Tries to find something but just throws it off. Obima stays on the baseline for the Zags with just nine seconds on the shot clock. And Mosa will come on in for Waba for the Waves. Mosa. 
Zach's probably looking for something here for Brenna Maxwell. She gets a short jumper and knocks it down. It's been all Brenna Maxwell offensively for the Zags. Callie now guarding Walls with Michaela Williams on the bench. Doing her best to stay in front, but Walls gets an open floater but falls short. Callie running the offense. Beautiful pass, threading the needle to Esther. She can't find anything, kicks it around, and Kaylin Trong for three, and that's in. The Zags are rolling in this third quarter. 39 to 33. I remember when you asked, should they stick with the keys to the game? How should they adjust? And I said, no, they need to knock down some threes. Gonzaga just getting to work here. Defense turning to offense. Brenna Maxwell can't get the right pass from Callie, but she throws it between her legs off of Brumfield and it stays. It's kind of broken up there, but Brenna Maxwell making something out of nothing, just throwing it between her legs to keep it alive. And the Zags are rolling here in the McCarthy Athletic Center, and we will head into a break. You're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. Back.
We're back in the fourth quarter. If you missed it, Brenna Maxwell has been a hot hand. 19 points. See her last two threes there at the end with the clock winding down. She's been everything for the Zags offensively. And the score is 50 to 38. And they've already scored more than their first half. Yeah, 26 points in the third quarter for Gonzaga. They scored 24 in the first half. And Brenna Maxwell being kind of the catalyst behind that. 14 third quarter points for the sharpshooter. Zags reset. Get to the right spacing. Kaylin going to the right. Just working around in the post. I think they're still trying to just find Brenna in any way they can. She is hustling around the court. Kaylin, pump, step back. Can't get the shot to fall. And that's their first missed three in the half. They were a perfect six of six in that third quarter after shooting just 16% from the perimeter in the first half. Kaylin Trong with some good defense, swipes it off out of Mbanifo's hand and it goes out of bounds off her knee. So ball back to the Zags. And Burton steps out and Little steps in. Trying to get Brenna, another shot opportunity. She's got Waba on her. Williams trying to find Stokes. That's tipped out of bounds. Well, and I think too, right? Offensively, she's hot right now. So Pepperdine knows that. So they're gonna be all over her. They're gonna double on her if she has the ball, if she gets past that first defender which is just going to leave another Gonzaga player open. So I think this is a real luxury right now on offense to kind of take advantage of. We saw right there, Waba's on Brenna now, and she's playing way more aggressive defensively and kind of just blows through that screen, and Esther able to draw the foul on Waba. Yeah, and you have to, though. Like, that's great defense from Waba to have to stay with her. You cannot give her any space. We have talked about that throughout this game. So we're going to see Stedman now with the matchup. As Amosa steps in off the bench. Callie coming up for the screen. Kaylin finds Esther wide open. She's driving to the cup. A beautiful idea. Just through the hands of Callie. She can't quite get it and give herself a good game. Covering Stedman. The switch from Callie, but Stedman knocks it down. And a quick timeout here from the Waves. The lead's now just a 10. Yeah, she's a really, really fun player to watch. And that is also like a really quick release, right? To have the confidence to just step back. but. Gonzaga, a 10-point lead for them. We will head into a break. You're watching Gonzaga women's basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. Welcome back. We've got eight minutes and 15 seconds left in this fourth quarter as assistant coach Brian Rosario has been 
making the decisions for the Waves today and offensively, coming off the bench, Ali Stedman has been their main key point of offense. She's now sitting on the bench, but she creates a lot of her shots on her own as well. She's got 14 points on the day. As the Zags now just with a lead of 10. Yeah, and 14 extend. points in 12 minutes, I think is like important to note, right? Because that just says like productivity. Kelly Williams over to Esther. Can't make the pass down the baseline. And Walls takes it up with Michaela Williams on her. This has been a completely different Gonzaga basketball team in the second half. It just started coming out with incredible defense, right? And then defense creating offense and then building that confidence and having kind of your two upperclassmen leaders be those catalysts behind it. And I'm talking about Brandon Maxwell and Kaylin Trong. Esther Little absolutely stuffed Marley Walls on the floating attempt. There's just more of a sense of urgency in the second half that we didn't necessarily see in the first. I would say we saw it maybe in like the final two and a half minutes in the second quarter. Whoa. Oh my gosh. That was impressive. Step back, <laughs> off the dribble, <laughs> knocks it down, no questions asked. Welcome. Brenna Maxwell. Oh my gosh, a shooting clinic. Unbelievable. Kind of speechless in a lot of ways. 17 second half points. She had five in the first. And we're talking about a team that overall shot 16% from three in the first half. Brenna Maxwell, six of seven here in the second. She's yet to miss a shot from the perimeter. She's got 22 points. A strong swipes on Obima, but she steps out when she's going for it. She stays on the baseline for the ways. Look at this replay, right? So she comes around the baseline, comes up high, and then just the notice, right? You talked so much about an awareness that she has of decision making. One quick combination move, step back, create separation from yourself, quick release. That is shooting. Yeah, the Waves just have to almost completely deny her because even if she gets in the hands, Absolutely. she's showing today that she can do it off the dribble mm -hmm. as well. Waba gets it and fouled down low. Looks like that is going to be on Esther Little. She's got four on. Oh, that's her fifth, actually. So she's going to be done for the day. So now they're down to seven as Destiny Burton steps in. Great effort defensively from Esther Little stepping up as Eliza Hollingsworth unable to play today. Waba over to Brumfield, open shot, short. Ejim comes down with it and a bad foul from Waba on the other side of the court. Those are the kind of fouls you just cannot do as a team. And Waba is gonna have to go out of the game. That's her fifth. So they lose a pivotal player for their team defensively. Yeah, I mean, she's been incredibly important on the defensive end and on the offensive end for them in this game. So not having her on the court, definitely, right? We talk about like who who is going to fill that role. Someone else has to step up and score now. She had nine points. They get it to Brenna, down to Ejim. We haven't seen a lot of her Offensively, she works in the post. Can't get the reverse. Good defense from Obima. This wall is coming down the court. Down to Mbanifo, over to Brumfield. Back down to Obima, and she knocks it down. Good ball movement from the Waves. Lead to 11 for the Zags. Walls anticipates the screen, jumps it. Kick out to Ejim. Cali accepts the screen, goes for the free throw jumper, can't get the roll, but Brenna Maxwell giving the second chance, open for the three, she pumps, kicks out, good patience, finds Kaylin and she knocks it down. Wow, that decision making there, beautifully on display from Brenna Maxwell, finds the open teammate who's also a hot hand, 
Kaylin Trong knocks it down. 56-42 Gonzaga. They are eight of nine from three point range in this second half. All of those coming from Kaylin and Brenna. That's crazy to just think about. It's so much fun to watch, right? And just to have kind of your leaders, your upperclassmen, people who have been in these situations before where you're down and you have to cut into a deficit and kind of put yourself in a position to an extend a lead, start to step up, and it just builds an energy, right? Like you can feel the energy here in the kennel right now. Cross court pass to Egypt. She's going aggressive on Mbima. She draws the foul. When we look at the difference between these two teams offensively, and we talked about earlier in the beginning, how Stedman was really their own only three point presence and the Zags bringing what they do best, their three points. And uh, with that, we'll head on into a break. You're watching Gonzaga Women's Basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. Back in the kennel, and the Zags are rolling in this fourth quarter, just under five minutes to play. We've been talking about the three-point shooting. The Zags, eight for nine in this second half. Kaylin Trong, Brenna Maxwell have been on fire, and we're coming out with Yvonne Ejim at the free throw line. They've been, early in the first half, they were working into her a lot, but now they can go back to her after getting those three-point shots up, it gives more spacing mm -hmm. for Ejim to work with. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, you know, overall in general, you want to have kind of both of those opportunities working for you throughout a game, right? So like a little inside, outside action. But I have to circle back and just like mention some of these numbers from Brenna Maxwell because it's kind of insane. And you said you were like left a little speechless, okay? 17 second half points. She had five in the first. She's a perfect five of five from the perimeter in the half. The team as a whole, they shot 16% from three in the first. Like that, that just tells me that at halftime, like you reset your mind, you come out focused, and this is what happens. Ejim knocks down the second free throw as Walls takes it up the court. The Zags not wanting to ease up defensively here. They've got a nice, mm -hmm. comfortable lead, but the good defense has led to great offense. Samosa gets the second chance off the air ball. She gets it back, open layup, but a big swipe down from Ejim, and Amosa will head on to the line. You know, obviously the biggest difference in this second half from my perspective has been the way that Gonzaga has approached offense, right? So they've gotten out and they've pushed, they've pushed in transition so they haven't allowed Pepperdine to set up defensively and kind of force them out of an offensive rhythm. They're like taking what they can and then moving the basketball quickly. They're cutting, they're right, if we think about how Brenda Maxwell is getting these shots, 
She's moving without the basketball in her hands. So that's just been an adjustment on their end. No discredit to Pepperdine's defense, which has been successful. Quickly catches it, puts it up. Oh, and it rims out. She mishandles it, but still gets a good look, gets it right back, and oh, another rim out. You just think they're always going to fall, but those just, just a millimeter off there on both of them. But we talked about just then the movement off the ball from Ben and Maxwell. Sure. That's just the extra step that great shooters take. Yeah, and it creates spacing for yourself. Right, so she doesn't need much space, but if you're moving away from the basketball, you're not the one who's, like the total focus isn't on you. Obviously your player has to like know where you are if you're that good of a shooter. But if you can come off a screen, if you can make some sort of cut, give yourself even a little inch of a space, you're just setting yourself up for success in those moments. Walls is unable to get the close floater to drop. Burton up top. Looking for Kaylin gets it back to her with a handoff. Brina trying to get some space. She's doubled, but someone's got to be open. Back to Kaylin's high screen from Callie. Shot clock going down, and Kaylin beautifully brings Walls into the air and draws the foul. Just the key itself has been completely opened up. Mm. Like Kaylin would have not been able to get that kind of one-on-one -on -one drive in that first half. Absolutely. I think so much of basketball comes down to spacing. It's so interesting, right? Because it's very like, we can break it down into all these different categories and get so complex. But the simplicity would be spacing on the court and what you can do, like mathematically, with given amounts of space, right? So opening it up, obviously, puts you in a better position to kind of try something new. Kaylin knocks down both free throws and Stedman can't handle it off the inbounds. The pressure from the Zags, too much for the ways, but Rumfield comes away with a steal. Stedman just gonna pull up on transition. An interesting choice from Stedman, trying to close a gap with a three instead of a, perhaps a, a layup. Kaylin can't knock it down. Burton's there for the free ball. Nice, oh boy. Goes up and rolls out. But back now the second chance opportunities are coming towards the Zags. Yeah, great hustle from Burton. To not give up on the play, right? Not just assume like, hey, this is going to be a jump ball. No, ripping it, getting it back in your position, position, and now putting your team in a position to score. Three seconds on the shot clock, but another foul from the Waves on Callie Stokes. She will head to the line for some free throws. And Banifo will come on in for Walls as well as Brody will come in for Amosa. And for the Zags, Muma comes in as Strong takes a step out. Two minutes, 48 seconds left. 16 point lead for the Zags, now 17. And the Zags are looking like they're at a point they can coast almost to this win. Yeah, right, like keeping that focus until the end because we kind of saw when you become unfocused, what mm -hmm. can happen. Yeah, these just having seven able to play right now. Even the players on their bench like Callie and Muma, they still bring a lot of defensive energy that kind of takes away that ability for another team to close a lead late in a game. Yeah, and I think, you know, if there's a positive to be seen in some of the players that have gone out in different moments and had to sit for different games based on protocol or injury or whatever it might be, illness is what we've seen as well this year. It's moments like this, when you have Callie Stokes, Peyton Muma, and Destiny Burton in the game, and they've been in this situation before, right? They've seen these minutes earlier in the season. And so it just puts everyone in a more comfortable and confident position from experience. Stedman knocks down the three. 
But yeah, those moments right now are very important for this WCC play and continually just putting out um, great performances. And the more they play, the better it is for when it comes towards March and perhaps April. And Kelly Williams gets the screen from Callie. Right back to Callie for the three. And that rims out. And that stays with the Zags. Brenna Maxwell heads up play for the attempt to get the rebound in it. Off the waves and it stays here with the Zags. But yeah, these games where they have these halves or these moments of just lack of offense, the Zags have been able to climb back and put themselves in a different mindset and reset when they get the chance to. And those, that kind of ability to do that is gonna be massive for when they have games with higher stakes. Of course, and uh, you never wanna be in that position where you're the one climbing back, right? Like any team, I think will tell you that it's more fun to be the winning team, the one that's leading. But that being said, moments like this are so important if we think about tournament play especially. We're kind of getting to that point of the season where this is going to start to be a conversation as we look towards the WCC tournament and then the NCAA tournament. Like moments like this where you're down and you have to climb back and you have to refocus and figure out what's not working and adjust in game. I think that's something a lot of teams struggle with. Shooter's touch there for Bruno Maxwell on the step back shot. But yeah, confidence is built through repetition and they, they've been able to repeatedly have these moments where they have to come back from a bad moment offensively or they're just struggling to get anything to go in. And the more they just do this over and over and come back from this, the more they believe that they can do this when they have these moments if they do come up later on in the season. Yeah, right, because you've been there before. And I think, you know, what we've talked about in this second half you know, looking at three players walking down the court that early on in the season, they got minutes like this. They got experience like this. And I don't know that they would have necessarily if there wasn't illness on the team, if there was an injury. So it just makes your bench deeper. And coming in, Gianna Riley, a two-way athlete, a soccer player for the Zags, coming on in off the bench. For the final 45 seconds as Callie knocks down the first free throw. The Zags up 65-48 as Callie just short on the second free throw and a foul. Looks like from Brenna Maxwell on Obima. Hoff taking it up the court. Muma Honor. Just a couple possessions left in this game and a foul down in the key. And Callie Stokes. A bit of respect there between Stokes and Obima. Just even at this point in the game, they, they both are playing hard. Even when it's the result is still decided at this point. But that kind of effort to play hard through the game is admirable from both of those players. Obima can't knock down the first. But Kennel still bringing energy in this fourth quarter. She knocks down the second. Muma takes it up. With two more possessions still left in this game. Muma gets the screen from Burton over to Maxwell. She had the shot, but she elects to run the offense here. Rejects the screen from Cali, goes for the layup. We'll head to the line to take it on two waves. Brenna Maxwell, just an amazing performance. She's got 24 points on the day. And I love that moment when she's like calling to her teammate, telling her what she wants her to do. Because in her mind, she already knows what she's doing. 
So like being able to tell your teammate and your teammate responding to you, that's just like a mutual respect. And I love those kind of moments where you trust. But the clock will run out in Stokes' hand. And the Zags, after a tough offensive first half, come back in the second strong and mighty. But a great wow. effort from the Pepperdine Waves. Just couldn't stop the shooting of the Zags. Yeah, I think that Pepperdine actually played incredibly well in this game. And once again, as they fall to two and nine in conference play, I don't think that their record in the WCC is reflective of what they can do. So don't count them out by any means at any given moment. But the positive for them, right, getting Allie Stedman back in this game and just seeing her productivity and what she brings to an already kind of steady offense. And for this game, obvious decision for the player of the game, Brenna Maxwell, 26 points, six threes. Just doing what she does best. Brenna Buckets. <laughs> it's catchy, right? 19 points in the second half for Brenna Maxwell. So much of that. She was five of seven from the perimeter in quarters three and four after shooting just one of two from three point range. Her teammates love it. She loves it. Respect. And what you don't see even in those plays is some of her defensive moments that were just big and changing momentum. But if we look at these stats of this matchup, the Zags coming away with the win, 67 to 49. And it was just the shooting shift in that second half. And even some of that shift, we talked about the rebounds. Yeah. That shifted a lot in the second half as well. I love that you bring that up. So total rebounds for Pepperdine in this game, 43. Gonzaga still lower on that end with 35, but if you remember, there was a point in the game where they had like 12 as opposed to Pepperdine's 25. Just those kind of like hustle plays that you have to get after, especially when you're down, looking over those final numbers. Gonzaga, if you remember, we saw a similar graphic at the half. Now they're kind of shifted and in the lead in most of those categories. Yeah, we talked a lot about spacing and how that, yeah. that spacing from the shooting also gives spacing for the rebounds and just everything was clicking for the Zags to come away with this win. And we'll look at their upcoming schedule here as WCC play is starting to wind down as they will take on Santa Clara and San Francisco in the Bay Area on the second and the fourth. And they will come on back for their final three games against Portland, Pacific, and St. Mary's. What, what game do you see that sticks out to you for this Zags team? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know why I'm being called to Portland. I don't know why that one is speaking to me, but I think overall, right now you're 11, 11 and 0 in conference play, and you only have a limited amount of games left before the WCC tournament and before ultimately the NCAA tournament. So every single game, like it sounds cliche, is important. No, every single game you have to come out and you have to produce. And so just to be able to once again get experience from being down, climbing back, no, you don't want to do that. But the ability to do it, I think is just going to benefit them in the end. And the Zags climbed back in the second half and came away with the win here in the McCarthy Athletic Center, 67 to 49. I'm Thomas Gallagher alongside Amanda Smith. Thank you for watching with us today. Have a great rest of your weekend. You're watching Gonzaga women's basketball on the WCC Network on Stadium. <laughs>